Welcome to a screencast on an introduction to atomic structure. The objectives of this screencast are to describe the internal structure of atoms, to write and interpret atomic symbols, to define isotopes and interpret examples of isotopes, to define the atomic mass unit, and to describe and determine average atomic mass. And we'll start with the elements. These, of course, are the substances that make up our world, but the ones that can't be simplified chemically. And the building blocks of these elements are what are called atoms. And atoms, in turn, are made up of even smaller particles known as protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, the protons have a positive charge. The neutrons are neutral, and Together, the protons and the neutrons make up the nucleus, and the nucleus contains almost all of the mass of an atom. So here is a representation of the nucleus of a particular atom. It has three protons represented by red spheres, four neutrons represented by blue spheres, and this is the nucleus of a particular type of lithium atom. Now, sometimes we represent the whole nucleus by a single sphere, so all the protons and all the neutrons are in this sphere, and those protons and neutrons, the nucleus, are surrounded by what are called electrons. And electrons have a negative charge. They surround the nucleus, and they make up almost all of the volume of the atom. And sometimes we do a very simplistic representation of electrons. So these are um, yellow spheres representing electrons, two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and two more electrons in the third shell of this particular element, an atom of this element. And this is the element magnesium. Um, it has three shells with electrons in it normally. Um, in reality, these electron shells are a gross simplification of what's really going on, and in reality, we'll end up talking about electron density as a better representation. Uh, more on that later for now, um, just the total number of electrons, and if you care for the shells, uh, will be fine at this point. Here is uh, a table showing some properties, some data for the subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons, uh, where they're located, what their charges are in coulombs, their unit charge, electron is negative one, proton is plus one, their masses in what are called atomic mass units, or AMU, more on that in, little, in a little bit, and their masses in grams. And notice 10 to the minus 24th grams, very, very, very small mass for a single atom. Here's one more way to look at uh, an atom, uh, just in terms of sort of size. Typical atom has the diameter of a nucleus in the ballpark of 10 to the minus 15th meters. So very, very small. A uh, typical atom has its diameter, so this is the electrons making up most of the volume of the atom. A uh, typical diameter of about 10 to the minus 10th meters, also very small, but not nearly as small as 10 to the minus 15th. And just to get an idea of scale, if we could expand an atom to the size of maybe a football stadium, then the relative size of a nucleus of that atom is about the size of a blueberry right in the middle of this stadium. And remember, that's where almost all the mass is. So almost all the mass in this tiny little blueberry, and then the rest of the volume of the atom is little teeny electrons. Think of maybe very small flies or gnats buzzing around and filling up uh, the whole stadium's volume due to their motion uh, and how fast they're going. Now, um, went back to the periodic table for a moment, uh, when we look at a particular element, it's going to have some information in a box on the periodic table. In this case, we're looking at oxygen, the symbol O for oxygen, sometimes the name's written, and then a number at the top, eight for oxygen, and a number below that, 16.00 for oxygen. The top number is what's called the atomic number. 
and the atomic number, uh, sometimes we symbolize by the letter Z, it specifies the number of protons and also the number of electrons in an atom of that element. So for oxygen, its atomic number is eight. That means it has eight protons and it has eight electrons in one atom of that element. So here's a atom simplified version of oxygen. Typical atom, eight protons in the nucleus, eight electrons around it. Note the positive charges due to the protons and the negative charges due to the electrons are equal. Both are eight in this case. So the atom is overall neutral. And that's true for any atom uh, of any element. Now, there's another thing that uh, is important to know about in terms of atoms and atomic structure, and that's called a mass number. We sometimes symbolize it by the letter A, and the mass number specifies the total number of protons and neutrons together in a specific type of atom of that element. Now note, this bottom number, the 16.00 for oxygen, is the atomic mass. It is not the mass number. Um, the mass number is often going, well, it's generally going to be quite similar to the atomic mass, but it's not exactly the same, and we'll clarify that distinction. So the number given, 16.00, is the atomic mass. Now, if we have a particular type of oxygen atom that has a mass number of 16, then that particular oxygen atom, of course, has eight protons and eight electrons, but it has, oh, and we can symbolize it as O hyphen 16. The 16 is its mass number. We can write the mass number as a left superscript. We can also either have the atomic number eight or not show the atomic number eight because the atomic number is essentially redundant for the element oxygen because if it's oxygen, it has an atomic number eight. If it has an atomic number eight, it is oxygen. So here are three different ways to symbolize the particular oxygen atom with a mass number of 16. And since the mass number 16 is the total of the protons plus neutrons, and it has eight protons, that must mean it has eight neutrons because eight plus eight adds up to 16. So let's do a little learning check. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are there in an atom of bromine 80? Here's the periodic table. We look for the symbol for the element bromine. Here's a little bigger picture. It's got an atomic number 35, so it must have 35 protons, and it must also have 35 electrons. And then if it's bromine 80, it has a total of 80 protons plus neutrons. Its mass number is 80. So since 80 is the total protons and neutrons, and protons are 35, 80 minus 35 is 45, and so this particular atom uh, of bromine 80 has 45 neutrons as well. Notice the 80 is pretty close to the 79.90 uh, atomic mass, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, so let's consider a different element, a typical atom, This, in this case of carbon. We look uh, up on the periodic table. Carbon has an atomic number of six. It has a mass uh, atomic mass of 12.01. Um, so typical carbon atoms are actually ones with a mass number of 12, so carbon 12. And those are going to have six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. And they'll look something like that. Very simplified version. Now it turns out that there are also some carbon atoms that look like this. And watch closely. They have one more neutron. Well, since they're carbon, they still have six protons and six electrons. But now, since they have one more neutron, they have a mass number of six plus seven or 13. So this would be the type of carbon atom that we would symbolize by C13. We can also have C14, we can also have C11, differing numbers of neutrons. And this happens for every element. Atoms of a given element 
have different what are called isotopes and isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons and if they have different numbers of neutrons they have different masses so carbon the most common isotope is carbon 12 but it can also have isotopes carbon 13 isotope carbon 14 and it can have other ones as well important thing to note all isotopes of a given element behave chemically in the same way. The reason is because all isotopes have the same number of electrons, so carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. All of these, even though they have different masses, have six electrons, so they behave chemically the same. Chemical behavior is in the electrons. Carbon-12, 13, and 14. Okay. So the last thing to consider, now we finally have to deal with atomic mass, and atomic mass is the average of the masses of the elements naturally occurring isotopes. So we'll consider yet one more element, chlorine. The 35.45 atomic mass means that if we take all of the naturally occurring isotopes in their natural abundance, their average mass will be 35.45. So that's the atomic mass. Now we'd expect typical atoms of chlorine, typical isotopes, to have mass near 35, so 35, 36, 37, 34, those sorts of things, um, and the 35.45 is the average. Now when we deal with mass and atomic level, we're typically going to use units, or often going to use units, called atomic mass units, symbolized by AMU. An AMU is defined as exactly one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon-12, that particular isotope of carbon. And if you prefer things like grams, one AMU is about 1.6605 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. So let's do one example with this in terms of calculation. Naturally occurring chlorine, which we just talked about, is about 75.76% chlorine-35, and that isotope has a mass of 34.969 AMU. And then the rest of the naturally occurring chlorine is chlorine-37, and that has a mass, those isotopes have a mass of 36.966 AMU. So what's the atomic mass of chlorine? Well, this is a fairly straightforward calculation if you think about it. 75.76% or 0.7576 of the chlorine has a mass of 34.969. So if we multiply those together, we get the mass due to that part of the naturally occurring chlorine. The rest of it well, 100% minus 75.76% is 24.24%, so 0.2424 times the mass of the other isotope, 36.966. This gives us the sort of weighted average um, of these two isotopes. That works out to be the 35.45 AMU. That is the atomic mass shown on the periodic table. So that's where that number comes from. And that is it for our introduction to atomic structure.